Yes, yes, it's not a stupid question. It's an IB thing also. Approximating area under using squares is an IB thing to do. Okay? So, yeah. No choice, uh, you know what I mean? Because it's international students, right? Like, if you ask them to, to, to calculate area under a curve and all that, they cannot take it on there. So, you have to dumb it down a bit, but then ask them count squares or. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Mm. Right. Yeah. Huh? What? Which paper you want me to go through? Yeah, so, so, so. yeah I'm gonna go through it now. Yeah. I'm asking you which one you want me to go through. Uh, the third question. Third question. Yeah. And the third question. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, tell me which one you want me to do. Uh, Just chat, chat, chat. In the chat, in the chat. Mm. Okay. Okay. Three, five. Wait, wait. Hang on, ah. Uh. Wait, three, three, three. Oh you haven't marked yet. It's okay, it's okay. Question Wait, I'll Only four wrong, ah, bro. Correct. Okay, I'll go through this one. Circle the question and ask me to check. Wait, okay. Um, can you write for me? Um, three, five. You know why, what? You know why, what? Ten. Three, five, ten, yeah. Three, five, ten, you are. Three, five, ten? Three. Okay, what's three? Why is everyone asking me for three? Correct. Correct. Huh? Correct. Okay. Hey, stop. Stop, 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 stop. Okay, stop. Question. Did I send you the ticker tip video to your? Did I did I recently send the ticker tip to your? I should have mentioned ticker. No. No, huh? Nope. Yeah. Hang on, huh? Ticker. No, not the talker. Ticker. Talker timer. Ticker tape timer. Okay. I'll send it. <clears throat> but if you got time, you watch it. If you don't have time, I'll explain it now. Okay. <clears throat> eh. Where's our group chat? Huh? Wait, huh? Hey, don't talk to me, don't talk to me, wait. Hey, funny lah, Ariel is still in the group chat. <laughs> Ariel, the MGS girl, the other MGS girl. Alright, am I? Okay. So, for stroboscope and ticker tape, first thing first, what's the frequency of the stroboscope or Frequency of the picture taken or frequency of the ticker. So for this one, the frequency is 20 hertz. 20 hertz. Right? 20 hertz. Frequency is 20 hertz. So what's the time taken? What's the period between two pictures? For stroboscope or for ticker, count spaces. Count spaces. Each space represents the same amount of time whether the space is big or whether the space is small the space represents the same amount of time so even how many spaces are there hmm so what's the total time taken here one, one over 20 5 times 1 over 20, yeah, la, so 1 over 4, right? Okay, so the total time taken is 0 0.24, right? Hey, 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 alamak, I got tricks, yeah. I got tricks. <laughs> hey, basket, these people. What well, are the 2 meters here and here only? 
So it's only four spaces. Wow, <laughs> I did. I, I will raise the, my hand no, and say, hey, hello, did you accidentally draw the arrow a bit shorter then? Yeah. No, wow, basket almost got tricked yeah, basket. Hmm? <clears throat> Really? Oh man, okay. Yeah, so these four spaces. So you use okay, so the trick is to understand this, huh? No matter how big or small the space is. Okay? If one day you you see the pictures looking like that, huh? Alright. The the space, each space still represents the same amount of time. Okay? So you can tell that the ball is actually accelerating because the distance between the balls, right, is getting further and further apart. But each space still represents the same amount of time. Okay? okay. Thicker, huh? don't forget, thicker. Okay, next one. What's the next one? Five. Question five. Question five. MG oh boy. Okay. So yes, this one, no choice. You have to resolve the weight into two components. You have to resolve it to this component and this component, right? Down the slope. All right. There's a certain trick to doing this. Let me show it to you in a bigger picture. Okay. First, you must understand that this is the weight and this is the normal contact force. All right? And what we are trying to do is we are trying to split the weight into two components here and here. Right? I'm taking the weight and splitting it into two components. Sorry, the green arrow is a bit short. So I need to show it a bit longer, a bit like that. And like this. Okay? Yeah. So something like that. Mm. Okay? Now, I don't know whether the teacher has taught you this. But I think if it's Devon, they would have earlier in set 3. No man? No. I thought this is a... This is not required for exams, huh? Ticker tape also not required for exam. So apparently Keegan has information on which ones you need to skip. Ticker tape is also one of those things that you can skip. I don't know. How does Keegan know? Ask teacher. So apparently Keegan said he he asked the teacher. Uh-huh. So, how is this information going to be disseminated to them, to the two of them here? How can we disseminate the, the information around? Okay, that's good. A no what's a notion? A uh, notion is a platform or you can Okay, okay. N note taking platform. Okay. And you you <coughs> can share it. So this one I don't need to go through, ah. Huh? He said don't need. Yeah, okay, in Keegan we trust, ah. Huh? Come. Question six is it? Let's do question six, ah. Huh? Okay. Uh 
Okay, so they're going to pull the rope towards each other. Right? Our understanding should be that the force acting on one of them is the same as the force acting on the other, so they experience the same amount of force. Right? But it turns out that they don't have the same acceleration. Right? Paul and Tom, Paul will have acceleration 1.25 times of the acceleration of Tom. Right? So AP is equal to 1.25 AT. Right? But the amount of force is the same. So you can understand that M mass of Paul times acceleration of Paul is equal to mass of Tom times acceleration of Tom. Correct? Yeah. Right? Okay. So which means that mass of Paul times 1.25 acceleration of Tom is equal to mass of Tom times acceleration of Tom. Acceleration of Tom cancels off. And they, what do they want? They want the ratio of ma Paul's mass, MP over MT. Yeah. <clears throat> and this will be equals to 1 over 1.25. Yeah. yeah, that's the answer. Yeah, 1 divided by 1.25, what do you get? Don't interpret it wrongly. Write it out. I want to see the working. Yeah. yeah. They are on ice, so there's no there's no friction. Okay, what's the next one? Ten. Ten, ah, huh? oh yo, okay. So they are asking you for the efficiency of this DC motor. Efficiency of this this motor. You understand this? Okay, efficiency, ah. Huh? So you need to understand how to find the input of the DC motor. So what does the V and the I give you? If you have V and you have I, what does it give you? Huh? Power. What is the power? 100 watts. But that's not the amount of energy that you are given, right? Okay. Now, you can compare efficiency using power or energy. So let's try using power. Okay. So the question is, what is the lifting power here? It won't be 100. No, I want power. I want power. Yes, I want power. Yeah, you're right. Good. So it's MGH over T. Right? The lifting power will be MGH over T. Right? The GPE gain divided by time. Okay, so what's MGH divided by time? So 20 times 6 times 10, then divided by 20 seconds. So what's your lifting power? 60 watts so you provide 100 watts of power but you only can deliver 60 watts of useful power therefore the efficiency is 60 percent i would have put 40 percent as one of the options yeah just to mess around with students right yeah put 40 percent here like, huh? is it 40 percent okay that's 10 next one come I heard 15. I see that's a 15. 15. Let's do a 15. Huh? Okay. Drifting in an environment where acceleration due to gravity is essentially zero, as the air on one side of the cabin is heated by electric heater, what is true of the convection currents caused by this heating? Wait, 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 wait. Oh shit, the answer is C. Oh shit, the answer is C. The answer is C, right? Yeah. The answer is C, the answer is C. Shit, man. Oh my god. Okay, this 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 really digs into a very deep concept. Okay, yeah, hang on. Uh ting 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 ting. Think of a scenario for you for this one. Okay. A beaker of hot water, or rather, a, a beaker of water that is being heated, right? 
The idea of convection currents is that the hot water rises and then displaces the cold water downwards. Correct? Okay. The reason why hot water rises and pushes the cold water down is because there is gravity. Convection currents can form when there's gravity. Yeah. yeah. So in zero gravity environments, okay, the what like you know that can't you can't form convection currents. Okay. Let's say you bring this water to a zero gravity environment. What will you get? You will get a ball of water. Correct? Then you let's say you go and put a Bunsen burner here like this, right? What's gonna happen is this side of the water is gonna become very hot. Right? It's gonna become very hot. But this water will not rise. Because there is no there's no like you know, there's no direction of, of gravity in outer space. So convection currents cannot form in zero gravity environments. This this plays on the idea that density, objects floating and sinking, is due to gravity. Difference of density causing it to float and, and sink, right, is it must also be accompanied with, with gravity. With no gravity, right, the cold water will not sink because it will not like you know the concept of, of, of floating objects or objects that are moving upwards like this due to a difference in density, right? It's is like basically one side is denser, the other side is less dense. Is due to the difference in density. This one here, out in in outer space, no no gravity. There is no there's no, um yeah, there is no convection currents to speak of. They did they did. They said the the spaceship is drifting in an environment. Then they said in the cabin. No no there here 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 here. Yeah, but that's the the, the spaceship is not outside. It's not moving about inside inside. Spaceship. Yeah. No, so inside has no gravity. Bruh, bruh, this is not your Guardians of the Galaxy shit, no. <laughs> no, no, bro, no. Outside, no gravity. Inside, also no gravity. Oh, okay. Okay. I thought they were like a slot or something. No, 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 no. You can't, you can't create artificial gravity. Oh my god, this is like... This, this is what happens when you watch too much Marvel. <laughs> this this is what happens when you watch too much Marvel, okay? Right? You you guys have your, your signs all warped already, man. Shit. <laughs> okay, come, next one. Sixteen is not in syllabus. 17, Seventeen not in syllabus. <laughs> Why? I is Thermocouple is not syllabus. I thought you all, and then they said they don't want to test ready. What? 21. 21. 21. Yeah. You hate waves only because you just recently got, got, got learned waves, what, right? Hey, this is two wavelengths. Do you understand this? Yeah. These two wavelengths. Yeah. So if your speed is this and your time is this, then the distance is how much? Distance equals to speed times time, right? Yeah. Okay. So 0 0.2 times 10 seconds. How much is that? 2 meters, right? Oh, yeah. So the distance from P to Q is 2 meters. But the wavelength is 1 meter. So B is your answer. Ah, oh, I got divided. No, but you must see that there's two wavelengths. Yeah, you must see there's two wavelengths, okay? Okay, Kika's asking for 23. 22. 22! Why do I need 22? <laughs> Why? Why do I need 22? What bong? <laughs> what's this? What's the first one? Show me, tell me what's, what's going on here. What, what's going on for the first picture here? What's the first row of picture showing you? Everything's chilling at equilibrium. Good. Right. Then what about the second one? Yeah, there's a sound wave passing through, right? And we take a snapshot, there's compression here, there's a compression here, correct? Yeah. So technically speaking, the wavelength is one compression to the next compression, okay? So you have A to I, one wavelength apart. So statement 2 seems correct. Yeah, it's correct. Yeah? Or you can take, bruh, you can take the center of a rarefraction and the center of compression, and you take this distance multiplied by 2. Also can, but that's not an option. Okay? Alright. Uh, it says... Particle C is momentarily at rest. I don't know. 
So how do you tell whether or not it's momentarily at rest? Which particle in a wave would be momentarily at rest? The amplitude particle. So this is an important question for you to learn. How do you find the amplitude particle here? Correct, because that's what amplitude means, right? Maximum displacement from equilibrium position. So what you need to do is you need to do this. Check out B. How many squares did B move by? Check out C. How many squares did C move by? Check out D. How many D? How many squares did D move by? And E, right? E didn't move by anything, right? E didn't move by by, by anything. E is, is still at its equilibrium position, right? Right not? Yeah. Okay. So the particle at amplitude is C. So statement one is correct. C moves to the amplitude. Pendulum, bro. Pendulum. When your pendulum is at the amplitude, what's the speed? Yeah. Right. C is the amplitude particle. C has moved to the, its amplitude. What's the definition of amplitude, bro? Give me the definition in words. What's the definition of amplitude? If you write that down, you're gonna lose marks, you know? Yeah, what is it then? Exam is next week, eh? Yeah. What's the definition of amplitude? <laughs> Maximum displacement from equilibrium position. Please look at C's equilibrium. Where is C's equilibrium? Here. This is its equilibrium position. Okay? Right? How many squares did it move by? When the wave has passed, here, here. Yeah. So you need to compare its equilibrium position to the number of squares it has moved by. How many squares did it move by? Four. Is it the maximum compared to all the other particles? Is it the maximum compared to all other particles? Four, four squares. Yeah, four squares. Yeah. Compared to all other particles, look at D, how many did it move by? Look at E, how many did it move by? Look at B, how many did it move by? So, you see your amplitude particle. Yeah, I move by this. So, that's your amplitude particle, right? Yeah. Then a pendulum and amplitude. What is the speed? Yeah. Is it momentarily at rest? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, C is also momentarily at rest. Because by definition, it's at the amplitude now. So the speed is zero momentarily. So statement one is correct. Okay, okay, question, question. Give me the speed of E. This is the maximum speed. There you go, maximum speed. E is going through maximum speed. I is going through maximum speed also. All right. So yes, just remember this for next week. Just do it. You know you learn already. Don't make the same mistake again. What about B and H? Uh, B and H is not right, right? Yeah, it's not. Huh? What's the what's the one that's actually in, in one wavelength about B and J? Alright, B and J. Okay, come next one. Uh, Keegan last for 23. Okay, listen now, uh, listen now, uh, listen now, uh, listen, okay. Where are these two light rays coming from, X and Y? Where are they coming from? Look, look, look at where they, how they behaving, X and Y. Right, they are, they are coming from infinity, right? 
all the way down here like this, correct or not? Hey, guys, does light ray PQ come from the same object? Yes. No. No, it doesn't. PQ is some random light ray. It's just some other random light ray from don't know where one. X and Y comes from infinity all the way down here. So you must remember this, right? Object at infinity, image at. Ah, uh, you all don't remember. Yeah. Then you all don't remember. Ah, uh, then how? Then send video lo. Send video lo. Object at infinity. What? Yeah, object at infinity. Where's your image? Where is your image? Oh. Lens. Is it? It's not on the, on the website. Okay, uh. Firstly, object at infinity, image at f. You all completely forgot. Completely forgot the entire sequence. All the six applications. Alright, so you know what? I'm gonna find. A video that I sent I just sent it. Wow, how can you all forget? It's somehow I sent that to the year sixes, you know? And that lesson is our lesson. Eh? Your year sixes are using that lesson to remember for their options in IB. Because in IB, they are now doing this thing called options and it's imaging. It's got all to do with lens diagrams. Yeah? But that's for their syllabus. Your IB syllabus is different. Next year is different. Not that I don't have that. I haven't looked through the entire syllabus yet. Next year, your first chapter for physics will have relativity. Time dilation. You know the interstellar one? Yeah, yeah. yeah interstellar one. The one they, they travel to the planet, then they come back. It's 10 hours for them, but 23 years for the guy who's waiting in the space station. Yeah, that's time dilation. Anyway, hey. Okay, so where's the where's the image? The image is here. Okay, the image is here. Like this. It's formed like that. It's a real image diminished, right? And inverted. But light ray PQ is some random light ray from somewhere else, but it just so happens to be horizontal. So when you have a horizontal light ray approaching approaching the lens, it will cut at F. Where is F? F is B. Not A. So B is your answer. Hold up. Hold up. Okay? I give you one more light ray to test, test your understanding. Okay, I'm gonna draw light ray Z. Light ray Z. Okay, so light ray Z is parallel to X and Y. It literally comes from the same object. So after passing through the lens, where would it cut? It will cut at A. It will intersect at A. Do you understand this? Okay, you, you understand this? Huh? Okay, now I will tell you that this, this diagram is a shit diagram. Right? The original diagram is a completely shit diagram. You know why? Okay, let's try to draw this one. I go and draw one that's parallel to X and Y. Huh? I pass through the center, it shouldn't bend, right? See where it goes? Yeah. Why is not freaking cutting at A? It should be cutting at A, right? So the person who drew this thing in the first place didn't even draw it properly.
Shit. Okay, next one, come. What's that? What? 24. 24? This is wrong. What the fong is this? Oh, it's just fine. Uh, 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 no, 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 no. I tell you something first. Uh. You better remember all your bloody angles to the normal first. Uh. You better remember it's all to the bloody normal. Uh. You go and find out what's the normal here. What's this? 82 degrees. Huh? Then this is the angle in the liquid. This is the angle in the in the uh, in the air. Yeah. Right. So what's the refractive index? Sin N equals to sine i over sine r. Right. What did I say about this stupid equation? It's not. It's, it's a stupid equation. It's, it's, just ongoing the it's been decades. It's been decades. Many many years. I still don't understand why they still use sine i over sine r. Yeah. I still don't understand. Right. It should be sine big angle over small uh, angle. Yes. Sign big over sign small. Yeah. See. Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one, come. 25. 25. Yeah, sure, you want to ask this question? <laughs> okay. All right. What's the number one rule you need to remember for wave refraction? I know slower, shorter, shallow water, I understand that, but that's for water waves. Right? But what's the number one thing you should remember? Frequency stays the same. So if the frequency of the sound wave outside is a certain value, the frequency of the sound wave inside will still be the same. Same frequency. So the sound wave travels at the speed of air, it enters a liquid and the wavelength becomes this. What's the frequency of sound in liquid? The same as it was in the air. So whatever frequency you calculate for the sound wave in air, there's the same frequency as the one in the liquid. It won't change. Why doesn't it change? Because frequency depends on the source. Right? You can't create more waves per unit time if the source remains the same. Like this. Right, the, the amount of, of waves per unit time remains the same. Right, so frequency stays the same. So can you find frequency from the first one? Yeah. You don't even need to care about the 2.5 meters. Oh, it's yeah, it's just distracting you only. <clears throat> Next one, come. 27. It's on the, on the paper and so, I, I'm honest, I don't know. So if period is 0 0.5 seconds and the time that has passed is 3.25 seconds, in terms of period, how many periods is that? Yo, Sanji. Yes, sir. Period is 0 0.5 seconds. Yeah. Time is 3.25 seconds. That means I wait for 3.25 seconds. But how many periods is that? Period is 0 0.5 seconds. Time is 3.25. How many periods have you waited? 6.5. 6.5 periods. Which means that this particle has oscillated 6.5 times. One time, two time, three time, four time, five time, six time. And a half. D. Okay. Side quest. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love being an NPC, man. The NPC can always call for side quest anytime, one. <laughs> Yeah, the IB6 people call me NPCs. Eh? I said I embrace it, no. What? Yeah, they all call me NPC. Eh? You know why not? Because I repeat the same thing over and over yeah, again. Yeah, and I, I actually think that that's a really good description of what I do. Yeah, I got side quests, la, I repeat the same thing, la, you know? Yeah, man. Yeah. Okay. You can't kill me. <laughs> hey. So I'm going to give you a displacement 
position graph. Okay, displacement position graph. Right, I give you a wave. Doesn't matter what kind of wave. It can be longitudinal, it can be a sound wave, it can be a water wave, doesn't matter. I give you a particle, right? I give you a particle. Particle P here, right? Particle P. Yeah, P stands for particle. I tell you that the wave is moving to the right. Wave traveling to the right. Wave travels to the right. Okay? Wave travels to the right. So now the thing is this, I want you to draw the displacement time graph for this particle P. Oh. Why? Draw it! Don't be a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> displacement time. Wow, you whiny little persons. Displacement time. Okay? So don't worry, I'll get you through this. So the understanding is this, you look at particle P, right? Look at particle P. And then you decide. In a short while later, where is it going to move? Um, uh, in, a sh yeah. in a short while later, you draw a side wave like this, right? A shifted wave like this, shift it to the right, and you realize that particle P will be moving up, right? The displacement will be going up, right? Okay. So if that's the case, then the displacement time graph, where do you draw particle P starting from first? At t equals to zero, it starts from here, right? If let's say they tell you that this graph is t equals to zero, huh? Then you start particle p here first. So if you know that the moment, the next, the next in the next moment is going to, is going to um move, it's going to move upwards. So you would draw particles p displacement like that. It will be a, just a normal sine wave because you know that the very moment is going to move up. Okay? Easy, right? Yeah. Now I'll give you something harder lah. Okay. So I give you particle Q. Right. Particle Q. Right now particle Q is at the, the trough of this, this wave, right? Or maybe trough not trough, most negative amplitude. Okay? At t equals to zero. So where does it start on, on the graph here? Um, yeah, down there. It starts from here. So particle Q, right? Displacement time at t equals to zero. It starts from the bottom here. Okay. All right. Okay, so then you will draw a graph that looks like this. Oh wait, hang on. Uh. Where is it going to go in the next moment? Sorry, I didn't check this one out yet. In the next moment, where is it going to go? Yeah, it's going to move up, right? Okay, if it's going to move up. Well, actually, it makes sense also. If you're at the negative amplitude, the next thing you'll do is you're going to move up. So the graph of Q will go like this. It will be a negative cosine graph. Okay, so yes, you need to work this out. <clears throat> okay, so this will be your displacement position, right? Particle on a wave, and then you convert it to a uh, displacement time graph. Okay. All right, so that was a side quest. 28. Oh no, which one next? Come. Alright, alright, alright. <clears throat> what, which one? 31. 31? Then 32, my teacher, like, talked about it as well. Okay, come. 30, 30, 31 first. 31 first, huh? Ah, uh, yeah, you, huh? So current flowing is where to, where to where? So this is the uh, on initial current. This is I1. Right now? Yes. I1. <clears throat> then they say that the resistance of the copper block is R. Mm -hmm. What equation are you supposed to use here? Given physical dimensions of the conductor. 
Yeah, r equals to rho l over a. Okay? So for i1, for i1, right, what is the l? It's literally the l. But what is the a? 2l over 2l squared. So the area will be this area here. Right, which is 2l times l. 2l times l. Correct? Okay, good. I mean, whatever lah, let's leave it there first. Okay? So now the question is, how about I2? If the current is flowing this way, then what is the resistance of 2? Rho? Hey. 2L. 2L, good. Over L squared. Over L squared, good. And then you go and compare the two, no? What's the what's the what's the comparison of these two resistances? That means you can compare this resistance with another resistance. Done. Yeah. Hey, bro. R R one is rho over two L. Okay. R2 is 2 rho over L. So it's 4 times. Ah. R2 is 4 times R1. Yeah, no? Okay. Fair enough. Okay. So I must tell you this. Ah. A lot of IB questions plays around with these kind of ratios. So you get used to this. This is a very core style of IB questions. Right, yeah, this is a core style of IB question. So that means they want you to do the manipulation of the equations. Ratio format. 31 done. Next one. 36. 36, right. <clears throat> Even the <clears throat> who also asking for 36. Okay. Oh yo, what's this? When you close the switch, the steel paper clip moves towards the copper wire. Makes conclusion based on what he observed. Right, statement one is definitely wrong. Copper is not a magnetic material. Right, this one you need to know. Right, so statement one is wrong. Copper wire exerts a force on the paper clip, but the paper clip does not exert the force on the wire. That's completely wrong also. If there's a force on the paper clip, there must be action reaction pair, so two is also wrong. Right, two violates Newton's third law. The paper clip will gain a north pole and a south pole when the switch is closed. I would think that that's the reason. Wait, let me think first. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, it will. Okay. But you know what? This is very hard to visualize. Let me show you why. If I were to close this switch, okay, the current flows this way, current flows this way. You use your right hand grip rule. The magnetic field actually is circular, right? It goes into the page on top and out of the page at the bottom. So what happens is that this, this steel clip, right, will align itself to the magnetic field. You see, the magnetic field is, is going to go like that and like this. Do you, do you see that? Okay. So what the steel clip will do is that it will try to align itself to the magnetic field. But the fact is that if it aligns itself, means that it will form a north pole and south pole. But it's very hard to visualize here. So this is a very strange question. So part, the only statement tree is correct. What's that? Um, 38 and 39. 38 and 39. Huh? Hang on, guys. Wait. Huh? Let me give you an extra side quest. Let's say this is the, 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 the normal, uh, you know, generic directions that we have. If you have a compass, where does it point? Right, it points this way, huh? good. All right. So what we're going to do is this. I'm going to give you a magnet on this side. I think so, but never mind, i try one more time. Yes, probably. I give you a magnet, and I tell you that the magnetic field from the magnet at this distance is equal to the magnetic field by the Earth. Okay, magnetic field by the magnet is equal to the magnetic field by Earth. 
describe what happens to the compass. So you should understand that the magnetic field from north is pointing this way, right? Okay, yeah, right. So Earth's magnetic field is like this, and therefore your compass will point this way. Right, the compass will point this way. Can I? Right, since the magnetic field from Earth and from the magnet is the same. Okay, that will be for your 30, uh, the side quest, 38. Uh, 38? Okay, in an AC generator, which statements describe the function of the slip rings? Okay, statement one is right from my, from my notes. Prevent the wires from entangling as the coil rotates. That is a true statement. All right, so you can choose B, C, or D now. Provide electrical conductivity between the coil and the external circuit. That's actually number two is also correct. So you can choose either B or D now. To reverse the direction of the current every half a rotation. Uh, uh, no. It doesn't do that. Okay? That's not what the function of the slip rings is. But of course you can ask. So why does the current alternate then? It's an AC generator, right? It's an alternating current. Doesn't the current reverse? Yes, it reverses because we keep rotating in one direction. It is not the function of the slip rings to reverse the current. Right? So the current will reverse on its own anyway. Right? The slip rings is just to provide the circuit only. So it turns out that the current will alternate because of the way you rotate. However, statement 3 is the name of the function for another item. It's the slip ring. To reverse the current in the in the coil every half a turn, this is for the split ring. Split ring commutator in the DC the DC motor, right? Commutator. Split ring commutator in the DC motor. Are we okay on this? Good. 38 done. Next one, come. 39. 39. What's this? A. 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 Ah. Okay, huh? Alright, this is an extremely unfair question. Yes. Okay? So, the answer is either A or C. Oh. Yes. To me, the answer is either A or C. It's very, 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 very annoying. Okay? It's very annoying, okay? I, I don't know, I don't know why, why teachers are still, still, like, you know, harping about this. It's very annoying. Okay, let me show, let me ask you this. What's the direction of force acting on AB now in this picture? Yeah, you're right. It's pointing down. Left hand rule. Okay? It's pointing down. Okay, it's pointing down. So half a turn later, right? Half a turn later, right? A, B, C, D will be on this side. So A and B, C and D will swap sides, right? But how does the current flow in A, B, C, D now? Right, it'll flow this way, right, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Then you use your, yeah. your left hand row, then the force will be up, right? So it points down on this side and it points up on the other side, right? Yeah. So obviously, the, 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 like to me, the direction changed, right? Yeah. yeah. But A is not the answer, right? A is the answer. A is the answer. Okay, you're lucky. Okay. You know why? Because there are some teachers out there, right, that say that you're not supposed to say that the, the direction of the force changes. I don't know whether your teacher does that, so you have to be very careful. Yeah, they said does. They said this is force change. Constant. Slip ring reverses the direction of current every half rotation of the coil and direction of the force changes every one second. Please take a screenshot of that, all right, and use it as your defense if they decide to mark you wrong. Because I've heard before, if I'm not wrong, I've heard before, because I, last time I had this student called Yap Han. Uh, yeah. Hey, you know Yap Han? Man? Yeah, he's a swimmer. Um, Yap Han wrote, the, the answer was that, he wrote that the force reverse direction, the force change direction, and he got marked wrong. And then the, the teacher said, no, the force actually didn't change direction. Pointing down on the side of the coil is the same direction when it reverses on the other side. So that's why the force is still the same. It's like... <laughs> Then, then, then what, you want to, what you want to do? You want to change your, your story every half a year. Every half a year, you decide. Your, you, physics is based on your opinion, is it? Uh, based on how you feel. Uh, right? every, every bloody half a year change. Right? So anyway, I've, I've been learning this since I was secondary school. It changes direction. So yes, A is the answer. Okay? Alright, fine. Alright, let's A is the answer. That's it for this one. Okay. 
27th of September. Come. 27th of September. Let's let's fix the timing. 27th, huh? Whole day. Whole day, every day, is it? Whole day, HBL. Got anything on or not? No. Got Charlene or not? No. Got other tuition or not? Ah. 27 don't have, huh? I'm going to put you guys down here. ACSI. ACSI. Um, what is that? Which paper? Tell me which paper. 2018, paper 2. What other paper do I go through? I want to go through more. Hey, give me the proper order. 19? Okay, Keegan has information. 